Hello and welcome to another edition of Ken Questions. I'm Ken McKim and tonight we are going to be talking about the controversial subject of the chronically ill using disabled parking spaces. Let's go ahead and jump right in, shall we? So it seems like not a week goes by where I don't read another story about a chronically ill person using their legally obtained disabled parking space permit and then getting harassed for it. Now this bad behavior unfortunately seems to be increasing rather than decreasing. And there are two things that need to happen in order for us to reverse this trend. First though, a little bit of background. I happen to live in the state of Nevada. And if you want to get a disabled parking permit here, you have to meet one of several requirements. Go ahead and take a look. I'll put them up on the screen right now. And as you can see, they're all fairly self-explanatory and they seem to be quite reasonable. I mean, you have to be visually disabled, uh, can't walk without the use of things like a brace, a cane, a crutch, wheelchair, or other device. You can't walk more than 200 feet without stopping to rest. You might be restricted by a lung disease, you need to use portable oxygen, cardiac condition, etc., etc. Okay, but look at this list carefully. Do you see the underlying thread that kind of joins a few of these points together, specifically? Uh, points number uh, one, three, five, and seven. Did you figure it out? Basically, all of those conditions can be completely invisible to the average person on the street, okay? And yet, they are still legitimate conditions by which a person can be issued a disabled parking permit. So why are these people getting harassed? Well, I blame a lot of it on this symbol right here. Yep, we've all seen it. It's pretty much the universal symbol for disabled parking spaces, at least here in the United States. And it is a big old wheelchair. And we see the symbol starting from the time that we are children. And it conditions us, like it or not, to associate disabled parking spaces with some sort of a visual disability, like a wheelchair or braces or crutches or a walker, okay? So you might be tempted to see, you know, someone pull into a space and then when they get out of that vehicle and walk away unassisted, you might be tempted to feel angry, get that rush of adrenaline going and your brain says, hey, wait a minute, they're clearly not disabled enough to use that space. Okay, I get it. I don't necessarily fault people for having that reaction, okay? So the first thing we need to change is we need to come up with a different symbol. We need to retire the wheelchair symbol and replace it with something that's more universal, something that better reflects the world we live in today, where so many illnesses and disabilities are, in fact, invisible. So that's step one. The second step is a little more difficult because it involves some behavior modification. So we live in a time where uh, a lot of people feel that they have the right to appoint themselves to be the behavior police and to correct any perceived wrongdoings that they may encounter in their day-to-day -day lives. If you're one of these people, okay, I would like to clear something up for you right now because it just doesn't seem to have occurred to you. I'm here to tell you that there's no such thing as the behavior police that you have no legal right whatsoever to go up to a person using a disabled parking space and confront them or demand that they somehow prove their disability to you. In fact, the only people who have the legal right to detain other people, to investigate actions that they feel might be criminal in nature, are the police. So unless you can show a badge to the people that you are confronting, you need to just leave. Just walk away. Just walk away. You have no authority in this situation. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have the ability to do this. Of course, you have the ability to run up to anyone you want and accuse them of being a bad person or doing something that you feel is wrong. And the person you're confronting also has the ability to punch you in the nose and tell you to get the heck away from them. Of course, this probably won't happen in the case of the chronically ill because Generally speaking, they're not in any shape to start a fight. And honestly, 
they're probably a better person than you are, as evidenced by their ability to mind their own business and your inability to do the same. It's not your place. In fact, when it comes to disabled parking spaces, the only people that the chronically ill have to prove themselves to are the people who work at the DMV. Because in this situation, honestly, the DMV's opinion is the only one that matters. Your opinion, no matter how much you value it, and I'm sure you value your opinion quite highly, uh, it has no weight, has no bearing on the situation, and really it's better if you just keep your opinion to yourself and leave these people alone. Trust me, the chronically ill have suffered enough without you adding to it through your ignorant actions. So, it's the part of the video now where I give you my email address so that you can send me your comments and I'm pretty sure I will get a few comments on this video. So that address is Ken at don'tpunishpain.com. If you would like to give me a tongue lashing over on Twitter, you may do so by following me over on Twitter at don'tpunishpain. And we're out of time, but once again, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'm Ken McKim. You take care.